so far early in the season. They put on a great show. We are getting set for the opening tip. Trey Chameleon will be in the backcourt with Hodge, Honor, Brown, and DeGray for the Tigers. Door, Johnson, Horton, Kelly, and Hendricks, the exciting rookie number 25. UCF in the dark. University of Missouri is in the white. We're underway. Both teams off to outstanding starts. Nick Honor. Over to Hodge. Boy, he's one of their top scorers, and what a three-point shooter, too. But it's going to be Kobe Brown off the rim, rebounded by Ithiel Horton for UCF. Solid look at the basket for the first possession for Missouri. We'll see what UCF is able to do on the offensive end. Darius Johnson on the drive. Now Kelly from downtown. He's got it. C.J. Kelly, the senior from Long Island. Shooting 33% from three-point land. Hits the first bucket of the game. Down low, nice pass. Chameleon gives it up, though. Good defense inside by Michael Durr, the seven-footer. And the big sentiment from Atlanta, Georgia, for the UCF. Here's a look at our starting lineups. Chameleon, one of the six graduate students. He came over from Cleveland State with Hodge. Honor to Gray and Brown. And you see the big guy, his door. Taylor Hendricks, the guy we're going to keep an eye on. Outstanding freshman. Nice drive and the basket for C.J. Kelly. And Craig, C.J. Kelly part, that was off Kelly to, Gray. to another, another hot start. Yeah, Kelly... Another one of the transfers. Good start for the Knights. They're up 5-zip over the high-flying Mizzou Tigers. Well, the Knights are going to try to slow down the Mizzou Tigers. They understand the pace and tempo that Mizzou normally plays with, and they think their advantage is if they can make them a little bit more measured and just slow down. The batter driving over to Chameleon. They shot off the rim and grabbed by Darius Johnson for the Knights. Here's Ithiel Horton. Got a season high 18 against Evansville. Evansville earlier in the year. Outstanding three-point shooter as well. UCF shooting better, Blade. That one nudges against the backboard. And it will be UCF ball. Nice assist there by Ithiel Horton. A transfer from Delaware. You get credit for that one, Craig? <laughs> Right, does that count in the Put one in his column. He's averaging <laughs> 1.3. He's off to a good start. As are the Knights here. See a quick substitution already there by Missouri. With Carter coming into the game. Noah Carter. One of their good shooters. Excellent from three-point land. He was six for nine earlier this year. As the Tigers beat Penn. Hit 16 triples in that game, and he had six of them. He's two points shy of the 1,000 mark. And Noah Michael Durr stretches the floor for Missouri with his three-point shooting ability. And he's matched up on Taylor Hendricks right now. It's interesting to see how that will go. Here's Hendricks. Nice passing went off Hendricks' hand and. The shot clock expired. But that's the way UCF wants to play it. Look for the good shot and use the clock. Why is that? UCF is looking not only just for the good shot, Craig, but they're looking for the great shot. They want to slow Missouri down. And listen, this Mizzou offense, it is ignited by their defense. You can see them trying to push the ball up the floor. They share the ball well, move it around the perimeter. So they're looking to shoot usually within the first 15 seconds of that shot clock. One of the top tempo teams in the country, top three is the team here in white, the Tigers. They have turned things around under new coach Dennis Gates, but so far a shaky start. Horton. Michael Durer works it out. They work it around for Hendricks. First look at Hendricks off the mark in his return home at the school at Calvary Christian. His twin brother is Jeremy mentioned on the team, and they won two championships not far from here back-to-back -back state championships and it seems as if we have an issue with the clock in that past possession 
what I'll tell you for the Black Knights, what I think I'm excited about is their offensive rebounding capability. You saw in that last play, they're getting to the offensive glass easily. They play a little bit slower. What they do is they generate offense through their rebounding, and Michael Durr off to a fast start, already attacking the Megan, offensive glass. All you've been telling me is watch this Tigers offense, Craig. You're not going to, they have no points so far. Give, give them a little time, you know? I don't think the numbers lie. They average about 90 points per game, but I think the difference is going to be whether or not UCF can slow them down. Third in the country, but Johnson with a finger roll. There he is, Johnson. His teammates like to call him DJ, but he is an explosive, savvy playmaker. He is indeed. Here's Isaiah Mosley, 6'5", guard out of Columbia. One of the few hometown guys, and he has nearly 1,500 career points to lead all the Tigers. Gets it back from Carter. Hendricks guarding. The pull-up. He just can't hit a basket here early on. Very rare start here for the Tigers offensively. Back for the Knights! Infield Horton from downtown. And a timeout is called by Dennis Gates. Mizzou 0 for 4 from the field to start out. Uh, Coach Gage just sat down with his team, and as soon as he sat down to the huddle, he said five times in a row, guard the ball, guard the ball, guard the ball, guard the ball, guard the ball. And that's what we saw this team focusing on defensively yesterday in practice. We'll see if they can step it up here in the rest of the first half. They certainly have a lot of scoring weapons, including this guy, Nick Honor. He averages 27 minutes and over 10 points a game. And shoots nearly 45% from three-point land, a strength here for the Tigers this year. Well, Here's Tigers, Carter. The Tigers have. You see Nick Honor there taking the three. A nice look from Nick Honor in the corner leading the way. The transfer from Clemson is used to playing on a big stage. He's played big-time competition, correct? And he can stretch to defense. He's more of a distributor, but if they call on him to score, he can answer that call. Horton stepped out, it appeared. So Mizzou will get a chance to cut it from the seven-point deficit. And Craig, a player we haven't seen in a few games for Missouri. It's Isaiah Mosley back into the game. He was out for some personal reasons, but he's a missing piece to their offense. I mean, he is a bona fide bucket getter. So I would not be surprised if he takes a few shots to get himself going because it looks like they need his scoring early on. Number 11 was a transfer from Missouri State, a mid-major All-American last season. He left the Bears for 23-11. and 11. And there is Carter. And that's a momentous moment for him as he hits the 1,000 mark. Goes over it, in fact, with the triple, and it's 10-6. 1,001 points now for Noah Carter. And this is the pace that Missouri likes to play with, up and down in the open floor, getting a stop and being able to capitalize off of that. Loose ball. Good hustle. Picked up by Johnson. On the move. And he lays it in. He's got seven points of the 12 so far for the Knights. Tigers getting a little feel, at least, Megan, into the game now. They are, but they're being forced into this half-court offense. They can execute in the half-court, but my concern has been, look how far they're starting this offense out, and with 10 seconds left on the shot clock, that doesn't leave them a lot of time to take a good shot. So the pace so far, you'd say, at the Knights level. Three-point attempt off the buzzer, off the rim, rather, just at the shot buzzer, as Mosley... And you see Carter at the top of the key lining it up. He can knock it down. We mentioned he had six three-pointers in a prior game this season. He definitely stretches the floor from the Mizzou offense and makes the defense play them honestly. Tigers have a shot at having seven players reach over 1,000 points this year. Five others are within 100 points because of all the transfers. That's an extremely rare thing to have, too, Craig. Such a potent offense because there's so many weapons. And Nick Honor continuing. Your Honor. Hot stop. Sorry. With his second triple. Nick Honor. It's a three point game. 9 3. 9 2 run, actually, for the Tigers. Hendricks. Over the bag. Tipped. No basket. Another look here, Door trying to tip it in. 
Well, Hendricks elevates Rise to try to finish. The ball comes out the rim, and it just looks like they're so wanting the tip in, but they called over the back and a foul on that last play. Yeah, he got the foul. Obviously, the ball was not in the cylinder. So the big seven-footer denied, and it remains a three-point lead for the Knights. Chance to tie it here. Long range, and Otter's got it. Hey, why not when you're feeling? Let's go. Let's go. This is the offense we're talking about and the firepower that Missouri has. They can put up points, a lot of points, and quickly. They are explosive. Three triples for Honor. And this game is now... Leading scorer right now in Des Moines Hodge. He has not necessarily gotten himself going. He's quiet. He's another weapon that they have to offer on the offensive end of the floor. So a lot to be seen here for the Tigers. Vega, they've scored all their points on triples for them in the game. They're four for seven to get them back in this. And they're not known as a great three-point shooting team. Come in at 35%, 146 out of the 363 in D1. Good pressure there for Mizzou. And on possession with the jump, they will get it. And it will be Tiger Ball. Good defense. Look at the intensity. Look at the active hands and deflections. Putting the pressure on. Missouri is strong. Forces to travel on the turnover. Hodge and Mo Mosley doing the job for the Tigers. And now, suddenly, they have a chance to take the lead. They were down 10 nothing to start this game. Demoy Hodge, born in the Virgin Islands, moved here when he was 15. Mosley, the one-hander, off the rim, rebounded by Chun from Senegal. Talking to a proud Mamadou Nijai before the game. First player ever from Senegal to be drafted by the NBA 22 years ago. And he was, he's an assistant coach of the Knights and instrumental in bringing Chun over here. Hendricks yet to get going yet. Nice move, though, for Hendricks. Off the glass. Taylor Hendricks so agile. You're seeing what he's able to do with his length to be able to finish in the body controls that he has. Nicely done. Another triple. Another three the was Kobe Brown. And Kobe Brown's able to bring that. And you see, uh, unfortunately, they pick up the foul there, but... Kobe Brown and the bigs from Mizzou able to open things up from behind the three-point line. Mizzou five for eight from three-point land and the front. Dennis Gates was an assistant at Florida State, another one of the branches of the Leonard Hamilton tree. Helped take that team to seven NCAA tournaments under Leonard. We'll see the Seminoles later today. That's going to be a fun one against... Mike Anderson in the St. John's Red Storm right here at Valley Sports. And this is just the first of two matchups we have for you today. Hendricks with two points so far, averaging over 15, gets it into Jalen Young. Had a good look, but couldn't get it. Well, it looks like they're going to call a foul in the interior. In that last play, I think... 35. Noah Carter was trying to box out. Now, that is something that I think we have to keep our eye on for Mizzou. Because the offensive rebounding for Central Florida has really been off the charts. Quickly in. But CJ Kelly off the rim. Rebounding battle. Good one. June diving. But obviously travels there. Good effort, though, by the hot June. A 6'10 redshirt senior. That's the effort that you won, though. They, didn't, they did not gain the possession, didn't go their way. But as the game continues on, that wears teams down. Eventually, the basketball just you know, has a way of making its way to you. Things start to work out. Played the last three years at Utah. He is a team captain for the Knights. Carter from the corner. Rebound. Mosley trying to get it off his hand. And it will be UCF ball. And look at Mosley Wise. What I like about this Mizzou team is how their guards attack the glass as well. It's not just the bigs. Everyone gets in on the action. And Mosley with a strong effort. Well, we talked with assistant coach Kevin Norris of the Knights. He said, hey, we'd like to slow the pace down, yes. But we want to score, too. Sometimes you get caught up in the defensive posture of a team and forget they've got some weapons. 
led by their exciting rookie. And Hendricks has has the ball here. Hendricks in and out. And rebound Carter. Hendricks is kind of off to a tough start, but he's not a flashy player. He's someone that will like kill you silently. Like to start. did it again. <laughs> That's his fourth it. already. You want to talk about a killer? It's Nick Honor. He is here. He showed up ready. I'm not sure what he had for breakfast, but give me some of that, please. Well, he's a Florida <laughs> kid. He's from Orlando, and he's feeling comfortable. Drive there and a basket of beauty by C.J. Kelly. He's got seven. From downtown off the rim, rebounded. An easy one there for Tymon Freeman in the game. And a foul is called beyond Mosley on the reach in. Missouri's doing a great job getting the ball inside out. Mosley getting two feet into the paint. What does that do? That opens out up that perimeter for Nick Honor. He has a wide open look at the basket and he's knocking that down. So Nick Honor is already over his season average of 10 and a half points, 10 minutes in. He's got four triples. Well, the energy that he's playing with, I really think it's contagious amongst his teammates. I mean, he's exuding an incredible confidence. Um, and that's something that Coach Gates wants from him, a little bit more. He said, I like that he can distribute it, but I want him to be a little bit more of a scorer. And, you know, he's answered the call so far in this first half. All of the Tigers' points on three-pointers. Another one in this game is off the mark from Kelly. And here come the Tigers. Six triples in the game, accounting for their 18 points. This time off the window and good. It's Kobe Brown. Nice drive for the senior from Huntsville, Alabama. Tigers by four. Knight slowing the pace. Inside drive, foul is called. Door was driving. Brown got the foul. We look back at this last possession. Missouri doing what they do best, getting out, open and transition. And listen, Kobe Brown able to take it coast to coast. One through five on this team, they are threats, not only in the half court, but in the open floor as well. Two shots here for Durr. First foul on Brown. Durr got the bounce. Nine for 14. A little over 60 Two percent from the line this year. Hendricks will take a break. Tierno Sila comes in. Another big out of Canarchy, Guinea. 6'11, 225, number 31. So that's a lot of height now for the Knights. I think what Coach Dawkins is doing is making a strong effort to try to establish his interior, right? It seems as if the guard and the perimeter are not quite as settled in, but if he can get that interior game going, that will open up the outside game for the Knights. Three-point lead for the Knights. Brown. There's Carter. And gave it away. Back is Johnson. He's had a strong start. Kelly in the drive. Foul is called. And it will be a blocking foul. Oh, Noah Carter. It's going to be a blocking. You see the replay. Noah Carter with two feet well outside that inner circle established. So I'm not so sure about that. I think if you go by the book, it looks like he was established there. He was not moving. Proper positioning. I guess you can maybe argue with the angle in which he took that. Yeah, the toes down. Here's a shooting. A second foul, rather, on Carter. Nice effort there. Look out. Nick Honor went flying into his head coach, Dennis Gates. So you're seeing great effort from both teams. And it's been an interesting game. 20 to 17. Yeah, I think so, Craig. It's going to be a game of runs, you know? And so I think the uh, the um, energy, I would say, that Nick Honor is playing with has really set the tone for his team. I'm not sure what Coach Gates told him before, but whatever it is, it worked. <laughs> Fourth on the drive. Nice defense by Honor. Boy, he's doing it at both ends of the floor. Honor thinks about it. He's got it again. 
triple already. Yes, sir, Mr. Honor, we see you. He is five for five from downtown. Nice ball movement by the Knights. Johnson, got it. That's a three-pointer. Listen, Darius Johnson, he's a gamer. He competes just like the rest of the players, but I think, you know, he's going to respond. Nice answer there for the Knights. Can he do it again? He finally, he's, he's human. He missed one. Honor now five for six for three-point land. Knights need a triple tie. Stolen away. Hodge on the drive. Des Moines Hodge. He's got it. And the foul. Horton on the foul. And Des Moines Hodge, the exciting guard, puts the Tigers up downtown. He's got 25 for 51 this year. I mean, Nick Honor is playing play. at an elite level, Craig, and it's an incredible start that he's off to. And the adjustment, that's what I'm looking for um, for Central Florida. What adjustment are they going to make? They can't continue to retreat into the lane. They've got to come out and find the shooters on the corner. Three-point play for Hodges makes the free throw. And a six-point advantage now for Missouri. Here's Horton. In and out. Nice rebound, though, by Durer. Kelly to Johnson. He's at a hot end, too. And he banks it in off the glass for the three. The bank is open on a Saturday. <laughs> Are you sure? Yes, you're right. It was open right there. Three-point game. Tigers leading. Here's Hodge. He's got it. It is a triple fest here at the Orange Bowl Classic. And the Tigers regain the six-point lead. Those threes are just raining. All right, so it makes some sense for me. The Tigers are two for six from two-point land. That's 33%. And 62% from three-point land, eight for 13. You know, there's something you just can't explain and you just gotta rock with it. <laughs> Knights trail by six. I know what it's called, Craig. It's called being in the zone. <laughs> Sometimes you feel it. Yeah. Hendricks trying to get there. The exciting rookie. Door gets it to him again. Finds the open man. That's Kelly. Off class, Hendricks rebound, and he was fouled. It's a shooting foul. I think the one bright spot right now for Central Florida has been their activity on the glass. Sometimes if the offense is difficult and you're not able to necessarily find your rhythm, you have to generate it yourself. And I think their activity on the glass is doing that for them, allowing to allowing them to keep themselves close. Hendrick shooting 77% in his freshman year here from the line. Johnny Dawkins hasn't seen too many misses from his exciting freshman who now has been named the American Athletic Conference Rookie of the Week for four consecutive weeks as he hits that one. And no one's ever done that in the history of the AAC. Well, there's no doubt about it. Taylor Hendricks is one of the most talented freshmen, I believe, in the nation. There's a lot that he has to offer, but I think he's just getting settled in. And sometimes when you're a young player, he's a freshman, right? Being able to see what's coming at you takes you some time to make those adjustments and to respond. Turnover by Kobe Brown. Tigers up by five. They trail 10 nothing to start off this game. But Nick Honor has led him back. His previous side, three triples, already has five in the game. Number 10 for the Tigers in white. Kelly thought about it. Now Hendricks. Kelly. He's got it. C.J. Kelly having a very good start. It's a two-point game. Stolen briefly, then off the foot. It will be Missouri ball as it hit off of the foot of C.J. Kelly. 
Well, C.J. Kelly, he's picking up where he left off, and I love the effort for him, although not able to retain the possession, but C.J. Kelly, he's explosive. In that last outing against Ole Miss, he put up 20 points, nearly a double-double with nine rebounds, three assists, so he's locked in. They need a little bit more lift from him, and what he can contribute, I think, to this team. There's, there's a lot more left in the tank for Mr. Kelly. That was a great win over Ole Miss last time out. 72-61, crazy game as the Knights also held the Rebels scoreless start off that game. First eight minutes, they had a 21 to nothing lead, but the Rebels came flying back in the game, cut it to four. Yeah, it's difficult to hold a lead that long, but listen, UCF got off to an incredible start, holding the old Miss to zero points scoreless for just about the first half of that game. Ronnie DeGray, the third on the line, misses the first shot. Don't forget, we've got a doubleheader for you coming up. First ever matchup between the St. John's Red Storm and the Florida State Seminoles. And that should be fun. Seminoles are playing much better basketball. Young team now. They've had some injury problems. The Gray hits the second free throw. The Tigers leading by three, 30 to 27. I'm Craig Minervini with Megan Perry. You're watching the 28th annual Orange Bowl Classic from Sunrise, Florida. Another downtown in and out, spinning around the rim. And here comes Trey Gamillion. He's pretty quiet so far. One of the real leaders, Rising Conference Defensive Player of the Year a couple of years ago. Game over. 18, gotta go! 18, gotta go! From the Vikings with head coach Dennis Gates and a few other players on his team, including Des Moines Hodge. He's got it. Kobe Brown. He's feeling it too. Well, you talked about Craig Trago Million and what he brings to this team. I mean, it's not just about his energy, but his national IQ. He is the coach on the floor oftentimes for the Missouri Tigers. He echoes a lot of what Coach Gates has told him, and he follows Coach Gates from Cleveland State. Morton responds with a triple of his own. So the Knights are 6 for 14, 43% from three-point land. And the Tigers are 9 for 14, 64%. That's a pretty good combination. We've seen 15 triples in 28 shots so far. Here's Honor. He leads the pack. Driving and an offensive foul on Isaiah Mosley. Isaiah Mosley trying to put his head down, get to the rim, but he extends that left arm a bit. Every time you extend... As you look at the great Johnny Dawkins, came to UCF in 2016. He led the nation. He knows about good shooting. He led the nation. 331 field goals along with Scott Skiles of Michigan State back in that great 85-86 season at Duke. And a nice career in the NBA, too, for the legend Johnny Dawkins. Got a good club here and a good matchup. Three-point lead for the Tigers. Here's Darius Johnson. Hendricks. Johnson fade away, comes up short. And it will be Tigers ball. Shot clock violation there for UCF. And I'm just looking at the body language of UCF right now. They need a little bit of a spark. They need someone to ignite them, to get them excited. And they're just one play away. This is still very, obviously, a very close game. But the energy level is remarkably different. And I think they're going to have to turn up their defense to be able to get a little bit more rhythm on the offense into the floor. Jump ball. Possession arrow goes to the Knights. Knights' largest lead, 10 right off the bat. The first four minutes, 10 nothing lead. Mizzou has been up by as many as six. And they lead now by three. Missouri's got a 
press the entire game, full court. And it may not bother you at first in the first half, but as the game goes on, it wears teams down, forcing them to think, because about 15 seconds left on the shot clock, they're just now getting into their offense. From the corner, Ithiel Horton, an outstanding three-point shooter as well, has tied this game up at 33. The Tigers, 9-1. and one. The Knights, 8-2. and two. Both teams yet to begin play in their conference. Steal by Kelly. He's fouled. <laughs> Did not believe. We were just talking about defense being translated into offense, and I think... Kelly's got it. C.J. Kelly. 13 points so far to lead the way for the Knights. Honor leads the way with 15, all via the triple for the Tigers. Sean East in the game, number 55 for the Tigers. Brown is fouled by Hendricks. Kobe Brown there keeps the defense honest. We talked about his three-point shooting. He put that on display, and so Taylor Hendricks closing out strong, making sure he has a high hand on the shot, but you got to remember Mr. Kobe Brown, he can take it to the hoop as well and finish at the rim. It's a tough guard. That's the fourth team foul. First one on Hendricks. Thanks will be in the bonus. There's a foul called on Hendricks again. It's going to be a jump ball, looks like, on that last play. Good defense again by the Knights. And Johnson on the move. He can fly. Oh, what a block. That was big Ronnie DeGray. And Ronnie DeGray in this game, he started this afternoon, and Coach Gates talked about the length that he has in the perimeter and how that can help these Missouri Tigers. Johnson nearly stole it from Brown, but he's going to get the foul. And DeGray is able to rise, find the ball, pins it against the backboard. <laughs> Missouri's going the other way, but that's the length that Coach Gates was talking about in DeGray and what he can bring to the floor and helping his team. Parker, Colorado. Here's Hodge off the mark. Three-point lead for the Knights. A minute to go here in the first half of the Orange Bowl Basketball Classic. Darius Johnson, 10 points in the first half. Hendricks has been quiet so far, just one for five, and again, a turnover. And here's Hodge. Brown to DeGray. Reverse layup is good. Good sequence here for Ronnie DeGray. He cut to one. Just a couple of seconds difference from the shot clock and the game clock here. Kelly's going to work the clock down and try and leave Mizzou at the very worst with only a second or two to go. Kelly driving now from the corner, off the rim. There's Horton shot, a chance here, and then stolen away, and that'll do it for a very exciting first half. Good finish by the Knights, Megan, a 9-2 run against Dennis Gates Club, and that has UCF up by one. Yes, I thought... Average scoring-wise. And that just brings us to where we are. Pretty mostly even a fair, I think, all around, but I think for... Central Florida. Taylor Hendricks has a lot of business to make up, shall we say, in the second half. So I expect a lot from him coming in the next 20 minutes. Knights will start with the ball. No one in foul trouble. Carter and Mosley have two apiece. Nobody else with more than one through the first 20. And a whistle. There was an issue with the shot clock.
And escapes talking to his club. Tigers in their 11th year in the SEC. It's only been over 502 years in the conference since coming over from the Big 12. Formerly in the Big 8 from the 50s to 1996. Downtown off the rim. Tigers on the move. There's Brown on the drive. And he, well, he well, traveled there as he was able to go to the basket, but miss it. Now Hodge off the back rim. Think he got away with steps there, maybe? I thought there was a few extra, but I'm just going <laughs> to hold that for now. <laughs> That's it. Off the back rim. Kelly hit the ball and knocked it over the line, so it will be Missouri's ball. Well, in that last possession for Missouri to open up the half, we saw Kobe Brown take it to the rim. Maybe a few extra steps that he got away with there, but that's what Coach Gates wants from him. He wants him to be more aggressive. He said, this is the one player that I actually want to say, don't be so nice. I need a little bit more from you. Bring out the dog that's deep down inside. That's right. He said unselfish is one of our core values, but he wants him to be selfish. He said, forget the core value, at least you. Right. Forget that one core value. <laughs> Golston. Andre Golston. Three-pointer. That's his first bucket of the game. And it's got the Tigers back up by two. Two-point lead for Missouri. Averaging 90 points a game this year. That's third in the nation. Knights have done a pretty good job despite the fact that Missouri has hit now 10 triples in the game. Here's Johnson playing in his sixth game at a lower body injury earlier in the year at a career high 24 against Miami. 10 points in the first half. Hendricks trying to get going. He's triple teamed and he is fouled. The defense did collapse, but was an intentional great effort the by the Knights, Greg, getting the ball into Taylor Hendricks to allow him to establish himself. But we look at how the defense collapses in. Three players drawing attention when he touches the ball. Gordon works it out. Door decides to shoot off the back rim, shooting been a little issue for both teams here to start the second half after the explosive outdoor range for both teams. Nice soft jumper right there. Bolston off to a five-point start in the second half. Four-point Tiger lead. Kelly tried to set up Hendricks. Now the ball is kicked away and a break for the Knights. Nick Honor could not handle it. Missouri getting another opportunity, but both teams coming out into the second half looking to establish in the paint. Their guards are driving hard to the rim. The posts are trying to get some touches. The message, it seems like it was at halftime for both teams, get the ball in the paint. Ithiel Horton, red shirt senior. Averaging 10 points a game. Started his college career at Delaware. Works it into Darius Johnson from Boyds, Maryland. The sophomore has had a very good game here. Kelly in and out. He thought he had it. And Honor grabs the ball. And Hodge! Des Moines Hodge! With the jammer, six-point lead for the Tigers. My goodness, Des Moy Hodge just woke up the arena with that last dunk. Young oh, man, taking it in. We said get into the paint. Look at him elevate and then just yams it. <laughs> Strong finish at the rim. Setting the tone, perhaps, for his team. Back for a limited time in all its tender, marinated glory? Go ahead. Call it a comeback. It's bow time. On a venture. A few years back. Brad student from Orlando. Playing here now in South Florida. 
against the Orlando team is University of Central Florida. Good ball movement again for the Tigers. Driving. Oh, what a start for Golston to this second half. He's got seven points all in the second half. Golston primarily known for his abilities on defense. He's bringing the offense this afternoon. The Gray again got in there rejecting the drive for Darius Johnson. Horton comes up short. And Tigers looking to extend to a 10-point lead all of a sudden. Thanks to Golston, who has come out firing here in the second half. And this UCF defense is scrambling. Missouri is one of the best teams, I think, in the country at sharing the ball, how they move it around the perimeter. And they have UCF on their heels. Oh, well, they had them all alone, and... The Gray just lost the handle on the ball as he had a chance for probably an easy basket. Good second half, though, for DeAndre Golston from Gary, Indiana. Hendricks and his size on the interior, they have not been able to. And once again, three people collapse. It's one on three when Hendricks gets the ball. Drive and the foul. Hendricks uh, had scored 15 points in eight of the last 10 games as a freshman. And a great 50% three-point shooter, but he has been quiet. The foul on the Knights. And Brown will get the two shots. Seventy-eight percent free throw shooter. It's the back rim. Only the fourth shot from the line for the Tigers. And that's the biggest lead of the game right now for the Tigers at nine. UCF led by as many as ten. Scoring the first 10 points. Good pressure, though, but they break it. Here's Hendricks on the drive. Hendricks off drives. He's short again. And Hendricks starting to show a little bit of frustration. But I think when you're young, the freshman that he is, and Nick Arnold with a miss, you have to find other ways to impact the game. Stolen, though, by Hodge. He tries a right-handed jam. And he is fouled. My goodness. <laughs> and the Missouri bench loves the effort. Tomoy Hodge gonna rise. That young man tried to finish with authority. But he'll get an opportunity to finish at the line. But look at the rise on Mr. Demoy Hodge. I mean, Demoy Hodge is someone coming into this year last year. With the Horizon League, he was Defensive Player of the Year, known for his defensive prowess, and he comes over to Missouri, and we've seen what he's able to do on offense. That's actually a bonus, the offense that he provides to this team. It's one of two. C.J. Kelly took his first foul. So it's a 10-point lead, Missouri. UCF is not in the basket since the 122 mark of that first half. They try here, miss, but there is a foul. Ithiel Horton was charging in. We talk about going inside out. Nice passing on the interior. Ithiel Horton not able to finish, but will get an opportunity to do so at the line. And I think that's where it's going to have to start for Central Florida. When you're having trouble generating offense, you got to get to the offensive glass and or get to the free throw line. Sometimes all you need is to see the ball go through the hoop. And when, when I played back in the day, my dad would always, would always say the one place where there is no defense is that free throw line. <laughs> See the ball go through the net. The Gray took the foul there for the Tigers. Horton hitting one of two. It's a nine-point lead for Missouri. Look at Johnny Dawkins, a little concerned here. His team had a one-point lead, but they have hit a drought here from a field goal standpoint. And that's their first point in seven minutes now. All of a sudden, Golston's have the hot hand here in the second half. DeAndre, the transfer from the University of Milwaukee. Good pass, though, but it went off the hands of DeGray. And the turnover gives it to the Knights. We'll have to be a little more careful getting the ball in as the Tigers have turned up the pressure. 
The heat is on in this South Florida. <laughs> Absolutely. Game two coming up. It should be a good one. St. John's and the improving Florida State Seminoles. We'll have it for you here on Valley Sports. The ball is not moving for Central Florida. It's stuck. Too much dribbling, not enough passing, one-on-one -on -one basketball. I don't think it's going to get the job done. I know Coach Dawkins wants more ball movement. The saying goes, better ball movement, better shot. John Clock was winding down, and Kelly missed that one. Now Hodge, deep one. He's got it. What a game for Tamoy Hodge. 41% shooter from three-point land. And now the turnover again for the Knights. Crumbling here a little bit in the second. When we talk about the defensive intensity, right? That defense generating offense. But what it does for UCF, it's really starting to wear on them. And Demoy Hodge, he said, I can do a little bit of something too in his offensive bag, showing you his three point shooting ability. He wants to get in on the action as well. Now a 12 point lead. Tigers looking to extend. Golston. Backed up by Young. Here's Honor. Look at the moves. Left, right, left, left hand. And he gets the roll. Nick Honor has the Tigers up by 14. And have finally, your, a non three pointer. Have yourself a game here, Mr. Honor. The first half, it was from the three point line. And now he's getting into the paint. He's got 17 points, and he does show you. They don't all have to be from beyond the arc. Yeah, with the handles and be able to finish over the length of the defense. And Michael Durr, count the basket. <laughs> the bench is fired up. Benny loving. Baskets. Yeah, Benny Baskets loving what they see. That's Ben Sternberg, was a manager here, now is a captain. And very well respected on the roster. He's the heart and soul, I think, of the energy that this team presents for Missouri. I mean, we, talk, we saw him in practice, and his energy truly is contagious. He's firing up his team on the bench and on the floor. Long shot off the front rim from Golston. And he's got some funny videos on YouTube, too. You can look him up or follow him on Twitter. Does a lot of interviews with the players. And he's very popular. He is a player himself, of course. Darius Johnson. Knights need a spark. Who can provide it? Did Hendricks lose it? He did. Another turnover for UCF. And as the frustration continues to mount for UCF, you see Hendricks again getting the ball inside, the defense swarming him with no options. It's practically four on one if you count the baseline as a form of defense. Not many options for Taylor Hendricks, and I think for UCF, the ball sticking in one spot for too long. Well, that was Johnny Dawkins had in mind, a 16-1 Tiger run to start off the half from a one-point deficit now to an alarming 14-point lead. Honor thought about it. Ripped in, but stolen by the Knights. Good D there by Durek, the big centerman. Now Young slowing things down. A transfer from Baton Rouge Community College out of Dallas. Johnson quadruple team and a foul. And now some pushing and shoving here. Noah Carter's come in. Well, it's getting a little spicy, and I think that the intensity has definitely picked up for both teams. Listen, UCF getting a little frustrated, getting into the paint, Johnson does. And it's four players collapsing on him. He felt, felt as if he did get fouled. I think a little extra unnecessary there at the end of that play. So I'm sure we'll review that. But for Central Florida, the problem has really been the turnovers. They have 13 turnovers, and Mizzou has 17 points off of those 13 turnovers. Honor got the foul, his first. Third team foul for Missouri. 16-1 is the run here for Mizzou in this half. And they lead by 14. Johnson out to midcourt. Jalen Young. You see the pressure by the Tigers. Whoever's got the ball driving and the basket. 
well needed there. Brandon Suggs on the move will get a chance at the three-point play. That was a great offensive execution. You see Suggs in the perimeter with a nice ball fake. Gets the defense rocking. And then a finish high through the net. Young man, nice play. But that's what Central Florida needs a little bit more of. It's the inside out. It's the ball movement. That's where they've found success so far this afternoon. Two fouls on honor. Three-point play. Lead us down to 11 for the Tigers. Brown. They thought he walked. Now to Hodge. Sets up Carter. He can't get the jam. Big rebound. Came out to Young. And Carter got him from behind. So Noah Carter is going to pick up the foul. That'll be his third. 51-40. Big second half for the Tigers. During a half-court presentation of Game 2 here at the Auto Nation Orange Bowl Basketball Classic. And as you look at these families, they're excited. They're helping to potentially raise future collegiate athletes themselves. So Craig and Megan, these are uh, the future athletes of America joined by the parents bringing them there. Great stuff, Jeremy. 51-40, the Tigers of Missouri in white in the lead. Darius Johnson in a big first half. Knights are looking for a spark, driving, and off the mark there is Brandon Suggs, but he will get the shooting foul. I think something to pay attention to, Craig, is how the physicality has picked up in this game. And specifically, I think that favors Central Florida. Their ability to get into the paint, stop the clock, and if they converted the free throw line rate score, that's going to help them close this gap and it really could change the pace and the tempo of this game. Nick Honor has picked up three quick fouls here in the second half as Suggs hits an important free throw, especially because the Knights are one of 11 shooting this half. Well, we talked about how do you generate offense. If it's not coming to you naturally and there is no rhythm, that free throw line is going to be your best friend as well as your activity on the glass. So I'm sure the conversation in that last break was all about getting to the free throw line, getting some rebounds, and maintaining your defensive intensity. So it's a perfect three for three. Knights are seven for ten from the line here. And the lead is inside of ten now. Nine-point advantage for the Tigers. Good pressure here on East. By uh, Young. Carter. Nice basket for Carter. Did not have a lot of room. And he drives it home. Well, the offensive aggression, I think, by Noah Carter there, finishing on the inside. He showed us what he can do from the three-point line in the first half. But now he's showing you his inside game. He's working on his next 1,000 points here. For the well, forward gets, from Dubuque. Yeah, and he gets the ball inside. He commands a double team, which I do find interesting, given how well the Missouri team has been able to move the ball and kick out to shooters. Johnson driving. They were looking for a travel. DeAndre Golston was giving his case. Golston gets his first foul. And that is the seventh. So we're going to the one and one here for UCF. And Johnson's got it. 82% free throw shooter. Well, it's a 10-point game now, and if he knocks that down, you're under the double digits. And then when you're a player, that matters. When you're on the court chasing the lead, trying to chip away at it, when you look up and you see double digits, it can be deflating. But now to know that you have down to a single-digit lead, you're inspired by that. You can work with that. 11 points for Johnson. American Athletic Conference All-Freshman last year. Bolston works it out. Did Carter step out? to be some confusion here with Hurt uh, that was put on display when they went up against the Kansas Jayhawks. But I think this game, if it defines their response, Coach Gates is happy about how his team has responded um, to that blemish on the record. Third meeting against the Knights all-time last in 2018. Tigers won both. That was a close one, 64-62. East 
three-pointer just before the shot clock expired. He got it off, but not in. So now, Knights have a chance to cut it to seven. Or perhaps six. Darius Johnson has 12 points. C.J. Kelly with 13, and Horton's got 10 for the Knights. Young on the move. Nothing there. Tried to set up Hendricks. And a little sloppy offensive possession there for the Knights. Well, Missouri switches to his zone. That caught, I think, Central Florida off balance a little bit and forced to get another turnover. Potter is fouled. Noah Carter with the ball in the interior. Here comes a double team, but it's too late. Once Noah Carter is able to get his foot on the box, that's entirely too late on that rotation. So it's either going to be two points or a foul. Kelly's got three fouls now. Carter hits the free throw. Ten-point advantage again for the Tigers. There's Kevin Norris, former Hurricane, and an assistant coach for Johnny Dawkins. Coached under that Leonard Hamilton tree or played for Leonard Hamilton. Kelly. Oh, nice rejection by Carter as Suggs was trying to drive for the basket. Here's East. He's off the mark. And Suggs lets it go. But now, the two said it went off his hands. Referee does not agree. And Spugs trying to go up, and <laughs> Noah Carter says, No, sir, I'll meet you at the rim and send it back the other way. Oh, can get up there. He's six foot six. But big rejection. Here's Hendricks. There's three points for Hendricks so far. Kelly from three. Got it. Big triple for CJ Kelly. And they got the UCF bench up off of their feet, and that's the movement that they need. The ball going around the perimeter, inside, out, one of your best shooters, and C.J. Kelly, count it. 16 points for Kelly. He's got three triples. And Carter out of bounds. So the Knights have pulled it to within seven, and they'll get the ball. But this is what I was talking about, going in and out, and then Kelly getting a solid look at that. When you're a shooter, especially... If you're a guard, you like to get the ball from that position when it's coming out to you. That's how you often practice it when you're not in a game. And so they set him up perfectly to knock that down. Knights fighting back here, Megan. UCF is not going to lay down. I mean, this is a margin that they can absolutely work with. There's a lot of time left in this game, about eight and a half minutes to go. Johnson does not get the bounce there from three. Golston, seven points all in the second half. And a big spark for the Tigers. Carter angling. Good defense, though, by Hendricks and company. And here come the Knights. Suggs on the move. Got it. Brandon Suggs. He's got seven points. That's the defensive execution that UCF is looking for. They're double-teaming the post, and the double-team arrived on time. And what do you get? A turnover. And a 12-3 run here. Suddenly... For the Knights to get back in the game, only down by five. Now the Tigers using the clock. Here's Golston pulling up. DeAndre Golston is four for five, shooting. Looking smooth. That was a difficult shot. That's something he had to create practically on his own. Pretty high level of difficulty on the finish. Johnson on the move. Oh, alley -oop, and there's Hendricks. Taylor Hendricks. His first bucket of the second half. He's got five now in the game. 56-51 Tigers. And it doesn't take much. That might just be the spark that Taylor Hendricks needed. Great setup. Nice to get an easy one, too. Sometimes you just need to see it go through the net. Golston. Nothing but net for Golston. He's been the hottest shooter of the second half. He's five for six. Horton on the move. Difficult shot by Kelly. Does not fall. 
Well, listen, Golston's been hot. He's had the odd hand the last two possessions, but I'm not sure it's the offense that Coach Gates actually wants. They're slowing him down, and this is not easy. It's one-on-one -on -one basketball. Golston again. He's fouled, fading back, and he will go to the line. How about this from the freshman? Well, Coach Dawkins just rolling dice a little bit with C.J. Kelly. He trusts him. He trusts his maturity in the winning moments. And I'll tell you, Craig, this is when you learn a lot about your team. These games are to prepare for your conference play, right, and coming up until possibly the NCAA tournament at the end of the season. You want to test those things out now. This Golston, is the test drive. An 80% free throw shooter. It's the first one. C.J. Kelly played varsity at Wine Dench High School in Long Island when he was in eighth grade. <laughs> So he's, he's been working on that maturity uh, as a young player in the basketball ranks, now a senior guard here and having a, a real good game. 16 points lead the way for the Knights. Here is Kelly, East guarded. Set it up for Horton, got it! Three-pointer. Ithiel Horton. Four for 11 from downtown. He's got 13 points. Six-point game. Honor. Five triples in the first half. Season high. 17 points for number 10. Here comes a double team on the inside for UCF. And what do they get? A turnover that's been very effective for them, collapsing into the post. And it was Hendricks who got the tip there, Megan. And a three-pointer! <laughs> Ithiel Horton again. Three-point game. Approaching the five-minute mark remaining in the second half. Two big three-pointers for Horton. Ball kicks away. UCF basketball. Brown lost the handle of it. Horton's been a hot end. Well, Horton's been the steady, a little pump fake step back. And he says, listen, I can do a little bit of that, too. He has been awesome for his team in the second half. Line it up. Let it fly. That's three points. And I think UCF has really been energized by their defensive efforts. They're getting turnovers, something that Coach Gates from Missouri talked about. He was concerned about his team's ability to take care of the basketball. Horton's hit five three-pointers. He's got 16 points now to tie Kelly for the game high for UCF. They'll use the clock here, 10 on the clock. And very tough to penetrate this defense. Hendricks got it. A three-pointer. And we are tied. The freshman coming alive here in his hometown. Good afternoon, Taylor Hendricks. He has joined the party. And why? Why are we here? Because of the activity of the perimeter players for UCF. They're penetrating into the scenes of the defense. They're kicking it back out. And their teammates are simply knocking it down. Inside-out basketball. Golston. He was fouled, driving in. I believe Hendricks got the foul. His second. He's up to eight points now. So the throw in here for the Tigers. 16 fouls, so they'll be in the bonus next one. Six on UCF. Tigers do have seven. This is what Missouri does well. So many weapons on the floor, they will spread you out, make you pick your poison. Oh, that was perfect. The boy Hodge. Yet another three-pointer in this game. His fourth. Three-point lead for the Tigers. Horton lost the handle. It is out off of the Tigers, so the Knights will have the basketball, and they are trailing by three with 3.28 to go in the Orange Bowl Classic.
Butler's twin brother is also on the team. He's been banged up with a little bit of a knee issue, and so they're going to redshirt him this year, but they like him. I was talking to Coach Norris about him. They like him a lot. Oh, that was nearly stolen. And is the uh, jump ball lead. Well, that was going to be a foul. And that is number four on Nick Honor. So he's in foul trouble. Kelly's got four fouls. And it is the bonus, so a one and one here for Brandon Suggs. I'll tell you, I think that fourth foul on Nick Honor is concerning because of the aggression that Missouri plays with on the defensive end. He's going to have to defend a little bit softer than some of those guards from UCF. And they've been having their way over the past couple of minutes getting into the paint. Big rebound by Horton on the miss. And the Knights keep possession here. First miss of the game from the line for Suggs, who's three for four. Hendricks down low, triple teamed. It goes spinning around. He can't get it. And a foul is called. And is against the Tigers. And it will be a shooting foul. Taylor Hendricks has been floating down here in this short corner into the paint. So when he gets the ball, it's supposed to be an easy look, but the defense collapsing, collapsing again, two on him. And then Suggs with the offensive rebound. This is a definition, I think, of Central Florida's basketball and how they play. We talk about rebounding. That's something that's one of their biggest strengths, particularly on the offensive glass. Suggs missed two in a row. Carter's got four fouls now. So three players with four fouls, Honor and Carter, and then Kelly for UCF. Suggs missed both. Hendricks had it, lost it. And they're going to give the ball to the Tigers. It's a jump ball, but it looks like UCF wanted to travel in that last play. Well, it looked like the ball was loose, too. And they didn't like the call. Not at all. You'll see all the rebound here. It's juggled around a bit. And that's Golston. It looks like he rolls with the ball a bit before he even hits the ground. But I'm not sure that he had clear possession of it. Tigers by three, three minutes to go. In game one of our doubleheader, St. John's of Florida State coming up. Carter's got four fouls. Double teamed. Good ball movement. There's Golston on the drive. Can't get it. Rebound rejected in front by Hendricks. Great defensive play by the freshman. A scramble, and somehow the Tigers still have the basketball. Wow. <laughs> Taylor Hendricks, the freshman. Listen, DeGray with the rise and then meet. So we see official confirmation here after all that time <laughs> from our pals from the referees telling us nine seconds left of this possession. Big possession, too, with two and a half to go. And a three-point Tiger lead. Nick Honor will inbound. He's got Hodge in the backcourt, gets it to Carter. Now, Golston off the back rim. Firing in was DeGray. And if that's on Kelly, that will be it for C.J. Kelly. Oh, what an effort by Ronnie DeGray coming out of nowhere to not only try and get the rebound, but winds up Kelly getting his fifth foul and he's out of the game. Yes, I think there are two big things that happened in that last play, and I think we'll talk about DeGray first. The length that he brings to, to the perimeter, rebounding guard, right? Coming in and swooping the ball down, trying to retain the possession for his team, but then Kelly with the foul, that's five on him, and he's been huge. C.J. Kelly has really, I think, carried a large load for his team. They're going to miss his point towards the end of this game. It's a one and one with a three-point lead. Good. So Ronnie DeGray. Now two out of three on the line for the game. And it's both. Big one and one. Tigers by five. Important double team. Solid, solid, solid. 
Chris Johnson looks at the freshman Hendricks. Behind the back dribble, now it's Young. Horton from three. Got it! India Horton. That's his sixth triple of the game. He's got 19 points to lead all scorers. And it's a two-point game. Carter finds the open man. Good ball movement. Golston. Can't get it. Rebound Suggs. Here come the Knights with a chance to tie or take the lead. Oh, great play from behind by DeGray. Causing the turnover. Ronnie DeGray. And a timeout call. So Ryan DeGray running up at two is upcoming. Can it match the drama of this one here, Megan? That'll be the question. St. John's and Florida State. First ever matchup between those two teams. Florida State's been a perennial team that we've seen here in the Orange Bowl basketball classic. This will be their 12th appearance for St. John's appearance number one in the classic. This is also Dennis Gates and Missouri's first appearance in the Classic. And the second for UCF, as Jeremy mentioned earlier, Marcus Jordan led them to a win over Miami in 2010 here. All right, two-point game. Just a minute 20 to go. 15 on the shot clock. Carter's got the ball. Connor, short. And Hendricks has the basketball with the Knights trailing by two. It wasn't a bad look for Missouri, but that was not the shot they were looking for. They were looking for Hodge, but he was being denied by Horton in that last possession. Missouri averaged 90 points a game. They've got 65 here. Hendricks for the lead! Taylor Hendricks, who grew up about a half hour away from here, has put the Knights in front. And they have put the crowd, Taylor Hendricks put the crowd on their feet. The freshman is not scared, rising to the occasion in the big moment. Mom's on the edge of her seat. Foul called. It is a charge. And UCF, listen, getting the ball to... Taylor Hendricks, he just lines it up and knocks him down. A missed assignment. You cannot be late for this young man. He's going to finish. And then Goldston had a lot of success. One-on-one, -on -one putting the ball on the floor. But that extension, it's going to be a charge every time. And Suggs picks up the foul. Knights lead by one. Inside of 30 seconds to go. What do you do? Look at the Tigers. Difference of about six seconds. You get into the paint and then you pick it out. You try to find Hendricks. He's working low. Shot clock down to five. Johnson spins it out for Young. In and out. Final seconds. Hodge moving down. Fell. Throws it over for Golston. 